Here's how California Governor Gavin Newsom is torpedoing his chances to be America's president. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. It's no secret that Gavin Newsom, governor of our largest state, badly wants to be the next president. Put aside how Democrats deal with a rapidly deteriorating Joe Biden and the possibility of Kamala Harris occupying the Oval Office, which horrifies all too many voters, if Newsom does end up being the Democratic nominee in 2024, his reckless record will likely doom him. It represents a direction for America that would suffocate the country's traditional free market dynamism and relegate it to stagnant, pitifully low growth rates like we have in Europe. The entrepreneurial spirit that has continuously kept us at the forefront of dynamic innovation would wither. This would not only be ominous for us, but also for the free world. A weak America always begets dangerous behavior by adversaries. If not checked, this would lead to a dystopian world. The once Golden State's sky-high taxes, suffocating regulations, and astonishing governmental incompetence are driving away residents California is on its way to losing a record number of congressional seats in the next census. They are stifling businesses, making housing inordinately expensive, generating deadly wildfires, creating unnecessary water shortages, and undermining the integrity of the electrical grid. But the bad behavior by California politicians continues. Here are three recent examples. One is the virtual takeover of much of the state's fast food industry. Sacramento has taken upon itself the power to ultimately dictate wages and working conditions. This is modern socialism in action. Don't take over enterprises, just rule them by regulation. A second example, the state legislature has passed a crushing law mandating that larger companies operating in California calculate not only their emissions tied directly to their operations, but also for their supply chains. Employee commutes and travel would also be included. Such calculations are costly and involve guesswork. The law is actually a wedge for regulators to dictate how companies manage their operations. A third piece of foolishness is the state suing five major oil companies and the Trade Association, the American Petroleum Institute, for billions of dollars over climate change. The state is charging that these outfits knew their activities were harming the environment and jeopardizing the existence of the world, but didn't tell the state, deceitfully continued their nefarious, globe-destroying drilling and refining. The state apparently never noticed. The charge is preposterous. The subject of global warming has been around in a big way since the 1980s. Al Gore warned about it decades ago. This is just a politically motivated attempt at a shakedown and favorable headlines for pandering politicians. It ignores the fact that emissions in the U.S. have actually declined since 2007. And it won't change the truth that the big emissions villains are not those oil companies. Why, the opposite. They pale in comparison with the real big baddies, China and India and other countries, going ahead with numerous new coal-fired power plants. Gavin Newsom, won't be occupying the Oval Office anytime soon. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.